All right, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to today's first practice day press conference. We welcome the DePaul Blue Demons to the, to the panel. Beginning at the far end of the table, allow me to introduce senior Kelly Campbell. In the middle, junior Marte Grays. Uh, working the way down the panel, senior Amara Coleman. And then seated immediately next to me is head coach Doug Bruno. We will begin this morning with questions for our student athletes, please. Amara, could you talk about uh, about playing a team that you have played before this season early in the year? Um, uh, I would have to say it's the same as any other game. You know, um, we've played Oklahoma, like you said before, and we just expect them to come at us a lot harder. Um, they're a great team. They have great shooters, great uh, – Great players that could get to the basket, and we're looking forward to just playing, playing them. Kelly, a question for you uh, regarding your senior leadership. 16 straight tournament appearances for DePaul. Can you talk about what kind of impression that allows you to make on younger players on your team? I'm actually a sophomore. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm showing that you're that you're a senior. My bad. It's okay. Do you still want me to answer that? Or? Sure. Okay. Um, I mean, it's a great legacy that Coach Bruno's been running. So 16 years in a row it really puts a lot of pressure on us and as a team. But it's really exciting to get back into the tournament. I think we're really excited to get started. This is really for anybody. But uh, can you talk about playing a team? I'm going to assume most of the time people are going to try to change what you guys want to do offensively, but. Oklahoma may not want to do that. Uh, can you talk about playing a team that will run with you and play that up-tempo up, uh, ball? I mean, we kind of just got done with a game where Marquette played up-tempo with us. So I think playing against them definitely gave us some preparation for playing against Oklahoma. Question over here. It's not really about remembering. It's about um, just sticking to the game plan and trusting what what it is that we do on the court. Um, I, a coach always says every game has a life of its own, so it's not going to play out the same way every time we play. But also like remembering what we could have done better in that game and making sure, making sure we do that better in the next game. Anything more for student athletes? All right, ladies, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good job, Marte. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once again, we will have the microphone coming around. If you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll get the microphone to you. And we will open the panel up to questions for Coach Bruno. Dave. Coach, can you talk about what you personally get from having played a team earlier in the year and particularly the type of game that you guys played against Oklahoma? We, that, that, the game we played is four and a half months ago. And Coach Sherry Cole and I are close coaching friends, and we coach similar styles. And, and yet her team has grown so much in those four and a half months. And so our team's grown so much in that four and a half months. First of all, I'm thrilled that Oklahoma got in. I believe they deserve to get in. When you schedule the, it's it's on us as head coaches to schedule a degree of difficulty in the non-conference that helps to grow the game of basketball. And that's what Sherry and Oklahoma did this year. They played a number two or number three non-conference schedule in the country, and I'm just really always going to be impressed by that. And anybody that says, well, they're only 16 and 14, or even any of the noise that they shouldn't have got in is really, I, I don't agree with any of that. I really believe that they should have, they've earned their way in, um, you know, just and then having a, a, a strong 11-7 record inside a Big 12 that's got two number two seeds and arguably a number one seed in Baylor. So, you know, this is a really, really well-deserving Oklahoma team to be in this tournament. Now, the fact that we're playing against each other, 
you know, because we played such an entertaining game against each other in 2014, because we played another entertaining game on Fox Sports 1 and, and national television. I, I, I'm not trying to get in the middle of, of TV networks here, but I mean, a nationally televised game on November 13th that everybody said was a really entertaining game, so we're playing another, I, I just think everybody likes to watch Oklahoma and DePaul because they know we're going to play some basketball that's entertaining basketball, but when you get to the nitty gritty about it all, Coach Cole does a great job, they're much better now than they were back on November 13th, and, it's, and so are we, so that's why it's going to be a great game. In the back, Cease. Uh, Robert Sessler, Brian College Station Eagle. Coach, what about your style? Is it easy to recruit to that style or just talk about how that's evolved? Well, I've always believed from the point in time I played college basketball, uh, I, you know, that, that you score, I, 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 I've done my own, you score at a higher rate of point per possession in the open court than you do in the half court. That's a fact. And to watch the game of basketball. It really is more entertaining to watch players in the open court, players that share the ball movement, shooting the basketball, scoring the basketball. It's, it's a more entertaining game to watch than a game that is just five people coming down the floor trying to grind it out into 40 and 50 point games. So I've just believed in this style for a very, very long time, my whole career. I think, I think it's been validated by what's going on in the NBA today and people playing a space and pace game that we've been playing for over 20, 25 years. So I just believe in it. But to recruiting, you know, I, I love our players at DePaul. I'm proud of the players that say yes to us at DePaul. They're the players that mean everything to me, the players that say yes to us. But this style, I think, is even a more suited the higher level player you go, I think it's even more suited for that level. And, and I think Coach Oriyama is kind of showing that with what he does with the UConn program. I'm not saying we're UConn at all, but I think an entertaining style, an open court style, a style that does score points. Yes, I believe in the in the belief that rebounding defense wins, you know, offense scores points and our offense sells tickets and defense wins games and defense and rebounding wins championships. I totally believe in that. But once you defend and rebound, you got a choice to make. You can walk down the court and throw the ball around the gym for 28, 29 seconds or run down the court and share the ball and shoot it and share it early versus shoot it and share it late. So that's basically what we're trying to do. Anything more for Coach in the back seats? Yeah, Coach, can you talk about the growth of the game when you got a, got a, a first and second round here with yourself, Gary, and Sherry, you know, kind of Hall of Fame coaches? Would that have been possible 10 years ago with the growth, or the growth of the game has really been that great in the last maybe 10, 15 years? Well, I, I, the game is getting better every year. Every single year, the game is getting better. Gene Lantiponsetto, our athletic director, is a player that I was blessed to coach back in the 70s. So I, I got to see what this game was like in the 70s. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm, I'm dating you, Gene. I don't mean to be doing that. But, but at the same time, I got to see what this game looked like in the 70s. And people like her and, and her, her group of, of players started this all just before the Title IX era, and this was a, it was a great game back then, but to watch it grow, and by that there's more players, there's more players that can play the game on every team. There's more, you know, there, there's, there's going to be 10 players on our, you know, on the floor when DePaul plays Oklahoma that all are capable of scoring the basketball, and that wasn't the case just a few years back, and, and I just think it's, you know, it's, it's a process that's taken place. The the fact that the, the media, and I, I want to thank you for being here as members of the media, but the fact that women's sports and women's basketball has covered 2% relationship to, to men's sports, you know, that, that is also very much a part of growing the game. We want fans. We need fans. And what comes first, the chicken or the egg? And, and to be covered at a 2% rate against men's 98%, that's just not, that's just not right. All right, and, and so I'm not saying that, that necessarily women's coverage should be 50-50, but more than 2%. So I, I applaud you for being here. I thank you for being here. But you asked me about growing the game. It's growing, but we need, we need media coverage. Cheryl Reeve had a great quote a couple weeks ago that says it's amazing how many people, that we get as many people to watch us that we do 
given, and these are her words, given that the, it, it's a blackout regarding media coverage on, on women's sports. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just really, you know, the, the growing of the game has many, many angles to it. Uh, our, 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 us developing players, more players being developed, but the media covering us is very, very important. And I'm not going to have this opportunity to talk without talking to it. So you open the door and I'm using it. <laughs> Anything further for Coach? One more, Cease. I get here late, but I ask a lot of questions. Has Gary told you where to eat, and do you actually listen to what the advice he gives you? Well, we had already chosen the Republic Steakhouse before he, he mentioned it, and um, now he's talking about Napa today, and he's talking about some flatbread pizza or something. But we, we have great pizza in Chicago, so I, th I think we're going to stick with the Republic. Um, they're also having a, a, a bourbon Final Four. I've never heard of a bourbon Final Four, but they've they've tested, they've blind tested their patrons for a for, last four or five weeks or something uh, as to which bourbon they like and now they're down to the final four so but I don't drink bourbon so it doesn't matter but it's pretty interesting to go to the Republic Steakhouse I did try his filet uh, chicken fried steak you know, he, he recommended that so we did have chicken fried filet never had that before I've had chicken fried steak but not chicken fried filet anything more for coach Right, Thanks, everybody, for, for being the media members that are covering women's schools. Really appreciate it.